Hey there! Today we're going to have a look at this pen because this was a much requested review. U vraagt wij draaien. So I went to Appelboom and I said, Joost, could you send me one of these? He said, hashtag boom. So this came to me. We're talking about the Faber Castell Essentio, which is a pen that is in my mind very reminiscent of the uh, Faber Castell, uh, the, the the basic. Sorry, I had to think. I wanted to say loom, but it's the basic. But now in this sort of brushed metal, which is quite nice, and with a metal section as opposed to the rubberized section they, they used to have on the basic model. There's a lot to be said for this pen. I think it has some pretty cool features. And best of all, it's about $40, so it's really not super expensive. Nice steel nib, etc. So I'm going to cover the parts of the pen. I'll do a writing sample and I'll tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Let's get started. Okay, so here we have the Faber Castell Essentio right next to a Lamy Safari. You can see it's a roughly similar size, I would say, except that the Essentio uh, is all made all out of metal. But of course, that has little to do with the size. About forty dollars at Abelbaum uh, depends a little bit on the exchange rate, but uh, without the twenty-one percent VAT, that's what you're looking at. Fine, medium, or broad steel nibs. Uh, a sort of a brushed metal, chrome details, which are very nice and, and shiny. I, uh, I really enjoyed that. And as I said, reminds me a little bit of the basic, but now with a, with a metal section. So let's, let's have a look at, at all these features. You have this interesting little sort of dimple on top of the cap, which I quite enjoyed. Uh, you have the clip. The clip is very nice and springy, works, works very well. Metal cap, it says Faber Castell, it has the jousting on it, and it says since 1761. Then we have this black uh, little sort of ring, and I was kind of hoping it was an ink window, I just held it up against the light, but it is not. Then we have a barrel, which is straight, and then you have this chrome end cap. The cap slips off. Then we have a section which is ribbed, right? And then we have the nib, uh, steel nib in this case, fine. I've always liked the design of the Faber Castell nibs. Uh, very nice with those, those little dots. Uh, and again, the jousting on it. Long section, so enough space to hold on to. And for some ungodly reason, you can actually post this device, which then turns into uh, I don't know, a pike of some sort, maybe that's that, that jousting, they, they try to go for that, that theme. Uh, it becomes exceptionally long, and I, I, yeah, I, I, even though it is actually quite balanced, I don't know if anyone would really post this, it looks, it looks a bit absurd in my mind. But it does have a very satisfying pop, which is quite nice. Now, the pen is fed through a cartridge or a converter, I'm pretty sure you can put in a cartridge and put a second cartridge in the barrel. It does not come with a converter, so you do have to purchase that separately. And that's pretty much it. Nib, plastic feed, number five um, nib, and that's pretty much all that's to it. I'm just grabbing some paper, and then you can actually see the pen in action. So, what do we have here? Faber Castell. Uh, a sentio with a fine nib and the ink is just a cartridge. It's just a cartridge that, that a cartridge that, that, that came with it. It wasn't a barrel, so okay. I've messed that up, haven't I? I'm reaching around a tripod, people, so don't don't judge me. Unless you do want to judge me, and in which case there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, what is the writing like? Pretty smooth. I've always found these nibs to be best that they're the broadest, but pretty smooth, which is nice, especially for a fine. 
good flow, writes very nicely. I know this sounds very scratchy, but bear in mind I'm writing on the cover, the back of the cover, and that always amplifies that noise a bit. It is, I find it quite a pleasant writer, but there definitely is some feedback. Those, those broad nibs in this class are super, super smooth. I do find there is some feedback here. Uh, pretty nice as to line variation, as always, very, very careful. Uh, I, I, isn't really much to be had, but it's also not a flex nib. So there is that. What about reverse writing? it turns very dry almost immediately. So I think you can forget about that. All right, well then let's see what I, oops, what I like about it and what I don't like about it. But let's do this once more. Yeah, that's, that's too good not to. All right, catch you on the flip side. Okay, what do I like, what do I not like about the Faber-Castell Essentio? Well, there's not a whole lot I dislike. Uh, it's a simple pen. It's, in my mind, pretty comfortable. It writes very well. It has a very nice, consistent flow. The fine nib is not the smoothest I've ever used of the Faber-Castell nibs, but it is very fine, so there isn't that much tipping material to polish. It would be a little bit more feedbacky, but in no way is this an unpleasant feedback. Uh, it's a little interesting to make this pen postable. I don't see a whole lot of people necessarily posting this given that it becomes really, really big, but that's a choice and of course you have that. Um, that's pretty much it. Cartridge converter, it's a bit of a shame you don't get a converter with the pen, but with $40 that's kind of that the point where you, you may or may not get that, although there are cheaper pens than where you do get a converter, so that's interesting, but anyway. Um, one issue I had a little bit was that this section is rather featureless. The other, the basic that I have reviewed a long time ago had a rubberized grip, so that gives a very good grip. With this metal, I don't find it slippery, it is brushed, it has some a little bit of texture to it. So there is that, but because it is featureless, it's not hourglass shaped or anything, I did find that as I wrote, sometimes the pen would, sorry, yeah, as I wrote, the pen would rotate a little bit, and I would end up with a less than optimal orientation of the nib to the paper, and that can lead to skipping. So that may be just me, I don't know, but I, I found that because it is so featureless, I found that a, a little, uh, I found the pen a little prone to that happening. And that's it. Beyond that, yeah, forty dollars. I I think that is pretty fair price for a pen of this this nature. It is all metal. It looks good. Uh, it 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 feels solid. It feels pretty well made, uh, without being super heavy. So uh, I don't have any complaints. I think it's a pretty nice pen to be honest. And that's pretty much all there's to it. So a kind thank you to Applebone for sending me this pen. Um, hope this was useful, and uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye.